Welcome to Let's Weld Something, folks. I'm here in Chicago, headquarters of Blue Demon Welding Material Sales. I want to talk about MIG welding, MIG welding 101, guns, components, how you put this stuff together. It doesn't matter what the gun, you're gonna have some common parts that are shared and purpose and everything. Your back end, doesn't matter if it's Tweco, Bernard, Miller, Lincoln, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have some, some purpose back here with some O-rings, okay? And you need to take care of these O-rings. In order to get these off, I like to squeeze these and make a little TP and start rolling them. Okay, they're gonna go over into the next groove here I'll squeeze them again and push that up. Now I'm taking, I'm able to take both of them off. And if you don't have these, you're just gonna be laying porosity down. And I've seen people, $10,000 machine, they're on a weld because they don't have O-rings in there. They're cut, they're dry rotted. This one's cut right here pretty bad, actually. And I didn't do it. I did not do it, but it's cut pretty bad. It's just what happens to them. This one's in good shape. I'm gonna put it back on, I'm gonna put it back onto the backside. So your backside O-ring is gonna keep gas from going out of your fixture in, inside your gun there, or inside your machine rather, I'm sorry. It's gonna keep your gas from escaping. There's a set screw inside your machine. When you put your gun inside the machine and you feel it kind of bump, it's bumping up against this, that set screw is either lining up right here or it's lining up right here. And this is where the gas is introduced into the gun and goes through your liner, comes out your nozzle, okay? That's where all of it happens. And if you don't have good O-rings, you're not gonna be welded. And it doesn't matter what type of gun it is, they all share that same common purpose. Let's go to the front end. <clears throat> On the front end, we have what we call a diffuser, and there's several types. Again, manufacturers, you know, we don't do, we don't make one and call it the same part number and call it the same thing. So we got to make some different styles, different configurations. This one facilitates, I believe, a number two type Tweco. But commonly, we have the liner that comes out. The liner in this gun is going to shoulder up against a machined surface in here and get pushed back in at a certain length. There, when these things, when the liner comes and you want to put it in, it's going to be out here like this. It's going to have extra material. And if you lay your gun down flat and shake it on the floor and you have it, you have a set screw in the back end where it's correct, this should be out here at a relaxed state and you can clip it off at the right length by putting this up with your threads simulated down the shoulder and you know that this thing is gonna cut off about right here. And so we cut it off right there. We don't twist this. You can lengthen and shorten your liner by twisting on your gun. So we don't wanna do that. We always want it to be relaxed so that your wire will come through here in a relaxed state. You don't want it rubbing against the liner. That's the worst thing that can happen. When we cut this off, you can make sure that you don't have a sharp burr up here that's hooked toward the inside of the liner because your wire will catch on it as well. So there's a certain way to do these things, certain way to clip them off. I've always taken a file and hit that and kind of pushed it away, the burr edge. This has got a little one, but not bad. Uh, anyway, we can thread this up in here and push down and basically install the diffuser back in this gun. And then I'm not going to over tighten anything. I'm just going to seat this in here. That's all it needs. I'm going to put this insulator on. This insulator goes on one way, but I see people put it on backwards. I'm not mistaken. I found this one on backwards maybe or the day before. That is not right. Okay. That is not right. 
this has threads in this material that there's no threads in here for quite a ways. And then there's threads that come all the way out to this end that goes on this way because you want that to go over the part that I put the wrench on. Now you have these holes exposed for gas. Your nozzle slides over this insulator, slides. I like using this configuration at times because I can push this contact tip right out here close. I get it right out here close or even flush. And I like that condition. There are times when I want to recess this contact tip up inside there quite a ways. So the electrical stick out, the contact tip is not exposed. I like that as well. There are other types that are completely thread on, such as this one. This one, the wire has not been clipped. It's got a burnt BB on the end of it. It's still there. I can't take the contact tip off of this. The only way I'd be able to do that is to loosen the contact tip, pull the trigger, throw some wire out with this contact tip attached to it. It's not, it's not sexy. It's not good. Let's not do that. Clip this off. And we're going to take this and loosen it. You need to size your drive rolls, your contact tip, and your wire all need to be sized correctly. Some of these will have straight up the number and, and everything on them for the size of wire. Uh, some of them will not. Point 0.9 Point 0.9 divided by 25.4 will in the, the point 0.9 is the millimeter dimension. Point 0.9 divided by 25.4 will get you the 035. Others will just say this is a Tweco 1135 or Miller. They give you some number and it'll give you the 35 or the 45 or the 30, whatever it is. It'll, it'll say it right on it. Some of them are hard to see. Uh, anyway. That's how we do. We would clip this off. I don't, you know, I don't care what these guns are attached to. I don't care what type of machine or the brand of the machine, I should say. Uh, they all kind of share the same components. We are going to do a part two where this be, we'll be doing some welds. Uh, we'll put this rascal back on here. Got a nozzle that I'm not going to put it back on there. We've got a liner that pooched out quickly. Maybe we better have a part three. <laughs> I'll get them on here after a while. I'm not going to fight him right now. Uh, get out of here. You need helping any. There's a, here's a, a Fronius type. And I've never had this in my hand before today. So again, I don't, it, it's not so much that whose machine it is. You know, here's a, here's a beefy, Diffuser, aggressive thread, square thread on there. It's got the insulator already. We're putting it on here that looks like it's got an insulator. So it looks like they're taking care of some heat out here on the front end. It does have an O-ring built in up here. And then we've got our phenolic material pressed into the nozzle. So we've got things happening here. Here's a different style of contact tip. It's heavy. Okay. I kind of like that at times because of, you know, the wear factor of what's going on. With some of these under extreme heat when you're spray welding or hot globular welding or doing flux core, metal core work. I don't over tighten the contact tip. Just seat them in there. This is going to have a thread to it. Boom. Done. Contact tip is roughly an eighth to three sixteenths, roughly an eighth inside there. So it's recessed an eighth gives you good uh i mean it's a constant electrical stick out if we're holding this in the short arc mode and we're down here at three eighths of an inch away it's always constant it's not slipping back and forth in part two of this series we are going to do some welds and we'll show you what happens with the electrical stick out we'll show you what happens with broken o-rings we'll create some conditions conditions that are wrong but conditions that we're going to 
we're going to correct them. And that's what it's all about. You know, we're going to be having awareness of what's going on with our equipment, how we troubleshoot, how we keep going for productivity. So put us in the comments what, uh, what we're missing. Let us know what you want to see. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Let's Weld Something. See you on Facebook and Instagram and part two. Thanks.